We love documenting our travels. And today, we're going to share our experiences using three different cameras. Our smartphones, the Google Pixels, action camera, the GoPro, and our newest toy, the Sony ZV-1. For each camera, we're going to talk about some basic specs, as well as three positive features that we really like, and three features that we think could need some additional training. We hope this will be helpful, so let's get started. The first camera is the Google Pixel. Here's some footage we shot hiking Diamond Head in Oahu. There are already new Google Pixels coming out, so some of these specs will likely be outdated. But my Google Pixel 3XL has a rear-facing camera that is 12.2 megapixels, a fixed aperture at 1.8, has optical and electronic stabilization, as well as shooting up to 4K. The front-facing camera can only shoot up to 1080K, but includes screen lighting as well as a 0.7x zoom out. It has some really cool features using artificial intelligence such as photo booth, which analyzes your face and can take pictures whenever you smile, as well as the ability to do playground, which uses augmented reality to allow you to do really cool things with pictures and videos. The three positive features we like to highlight is one, it shoots really great pictures in low light settings. We've used it to take pictures of our food when we're eating at a dark restaurant or some, a selfie after the sun is down. However, it doesn't do as well for videos. Second positive feature is it's very affordable and great quality for the price. The newest Google Pixel phones, the 4A with 5G is $499 and the 5 is $699, which is almost half the price of some of the new Samsung and Apple phones that just came out. The third positive feature is Google interoperability. If you have a Google Calendar or Google Drive, every picture and video you take is automatically uploaded to your Google Photos, so you can carry it with you everywhere you go. You can show off your pictures and your videos to your friends anywhere from any device, which is amazing. So for the three features that needs additional training is one, stability. Even though the camera has electronic stabilization, we still have to use a gimbal, including in the Oahu footage, or else everything just shaking up and down. Two, durability. Just like any other smartphone, you probably shouldn't be using it to take pictures or videos while you're riding on a bike or skiing and snowboarding because one bad drop or one bad trip, you're gonna have to spend another four or five hundred dollars to replace it, which is why they invented the GoPro. The third feature that could use additional training is battery life. Right around two year mark, I feel like every smartphone's battery life starts deteriorating. And we use this for everything from texting to calling to social media and playing Pokemon Go. So in order to shoot videos as part of that, you have to have a battery bank with you at all times. And as your phone gets older and older, you're gonna need that battery bank more and more. And like an action camera or a standalone camera, you can just take the old battery out and put a new battery in. But with that being said, we love our pixels and they're just an all around great versatility tool. Leading to our second camera, the GoPro Hero 8 Black. Here's some footage of us hiking with our dogs from earlier this summer. We upgraded to the Hero 8 Black this year from the Hero 8 Silver, which is way outdated. The 8 can shoot anywhere from 1080p up to 4K. It has an upgraded high definition resolution photo system, as well as the HyperSmooth 2.0, which is image stabilization that is approaching gimbal-like quality. The newest GoPros also has voice recognition and activation, and the Hero 8 Black is the first camera where GoPro is also offering a new mod that allows you to add additional microphones and some other accessories. The, Co the GoPro right now is currently $299, um, and the mod is $79.99. For the three positive features that we would like to highlight, it all starts with the durability of the body. As you can see on the unit, this is the main camera, 
and starting in the in this year they have this mod that you can buy separately for eighty dollars that comes with a shotgun microphone on top as well as additional ways you can add mics selfie screens as well as lights to the camera and it's so durable you know, we mainly use this for skiing and snowboarding as well as hiking as you just saw in the footage. So just the versatility of the camera and the ability to use it in any setting is a great feature. The second positive feature we like to highlight is the HyperSmooth 2.0. The ability to shoot a video without worrying about the bounciness, especially during activities. You know, I've taken videos during triathlon training, both during the bike, run, and the swim, as well as when we're just out and about like hiking. The ability to shoot footage that doesn't give you headaches when you're watching it is absolutely crucial and really enables you to take videos wherever you like. And that leads us into the third positive feature, which is the GoPro has an infinite number of optionalities for when it comes to accessories, whether it's selfie sticks or casings, you can get anything that allows you to put this in any position. So the world is your oyster when it comes to shooting with GoPros. And I'm sure we've all seen movies and TV shows where they got GoPros kind of hang off on the, on the hood of cars as well as in other places. And the fact that they're being used to shoot movies just speaks to the absolute great quality of this camera. However, there are some features that we would like GoPro to improve on in the future. The first one starting with a selfie screen. I know for the GoPro 8, there is no selfie screen, but we can purchase an accessory for the mod, but that will run us another 100 bucks. Or you can opt to buy the new GoPro 9, which does have the screen kind of where this small LCD is. However, it does make the unit a little bit bigger, and I don't really want to buy another GoPro since we just bought this one this year. The second feature that we would like to see improvement is the ability to zoom. The GoPro right now has four different features that go from super view to narrow view, and it covers roughly 16.5 millimeters to 26 millimeters when it comes to the screen size. However, the zoom is not as adjustable as it is on a smartphone or standalone camera. The third feature that we want, we would like to see some improvement is how to adjust settings on the touch screen. So right now, the way to adjust it is using this touch screen, there's little buttons you can click to kind of change it into some preset. You can see that here. However, if you're imagining you're on a mountain skiing and you're taking your gloves off to kind of go through all the settings on this, on the GoPro, it could have been a little bit irritating because you're probably cold and all you want to do is shredding down the hill right now. So we're getting really nitpicky, but it's just a feature that I wish would work a little bit better. With that being said, I love the GoPro. It is absolutely paramount to have when we go on different trips and so light to pack and durable. So still a great product overall. Moving on to the last camera of the day is the Sony ZV-1. We've actually been using it to shoot most of today's footage, so I'm excited for you to see what the camera looks like. Here's some footage of Ziggy doing tricks in our living room. The Sony ZV-1 is built up of the very popular RX100 camera. It has the same Zeiss 24-70mm equivalent standard zoom lens with a bright f1.8-2.8 maximum exposure range along with a 20.1 megapixel sensor. It is a purpose-built compact camera specifically targeting vloggers, including a side flip-out 3.0-inch touchscreen, along with a three-capsule microphone that is perfect for front-facing recording. It also has abundance of new features that I'll touch upon a little bit later, which is also why we are absolutely in love with this camera and are excited to have it join our vlogging journey. One of its new features is the active steady shot image stabilization that helps steady footage and reduce the appearance of camera shaking for smoother takes. Speed is also a huge advantage of the ZV-1 and users will benefit from advanced high frame rate shooting and super slow motion. The camera also offers a dedicated high frame mode that boosts the camera's frame rate up to 960 frames per second. The three positive features I want to highlight about this camera is one, it's completely customizable. 
unlike the smartphone camera and the GoPro, you can change your shutter speed, you can change your ISO, you can change your aperture, among many other features so that each shot or each video that you record can be completely customized to your liking. The second positive feature that I would like to highlight is this 3-inch LCD side screen that I absolutely love. It can be folded in to actually turn off the camera, and then when you fold it back out, it will restart the camera. And two, the screen can be completely flipped to do selfie mode, or you can even tilt it to shoot many other angles. The third feature that I would like to highlight is the abundance of software features it comes with. Autofocusing, product showcase, it even has a feature that does skin smoothening, so a lot of great things to love, but there are a few features that I think there's room for improvement. It starts with the battery and SD card. So the slot is located on the bottom here. So in order to change out your battery or the SD card, you have to open this little door right here. However, as you can see, it's right next to the screw that's used to screw it into a tripod or a selfie stick, which is kind of a hassle when you gotta swap the battery in and out. The second feature where there's room for additional training is the charging port. Unfortunately, it is not a USB-C. The rest of our gear, our laptop, the Pixel, the GoPro, among many other devices are all USB-C, so we have to carry an extra cord just to charge this camera. So I hope in the future years, they'll upgrade that feature. Third feature that could use some additional improvement is the LCD screen is a touch screen, but only for touching where you want the autofocus to be. It doesn't allow you to change any of the other settings or go through any of the menus. So hopefully in future years, they can make the LCD screen more comprehensive and you can access more tools and settings from using the back of the screen. And that is all. I hope the information we just shared is useful. As you heard, there are definitely pros and cons to each camera. And based on your preferences and your budget, you can't really go wrong with any of these cameras. We love all three. The Pixel is a great versatility tool. The GoPro is rugged and allows us to take action footage. And the ZV-1 is just an all-around performance machine. And we use them for different settings, for different occasions, and based on our plan, different trips. So. I hope the information we provided can really help you pick your next camera or maybe cameras. If you want to see more product reviews, please comment below, like, and subscribe, and we'll see you all next time.